ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تبارك وتعالى في شان حبيبه ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا ومولانا محمد مبارك وسلم صلاه وسلاما عليك يا رسول الله صلاه وسلاما عليك يا حبيب الله his eminence most respected hazrat allama mufti abbas sahab qibla his eminence نائب امیر سنی دعوت اسلامی حضرت علامہ مولانا قاری رضوان صاحب قبلہ all the most respected scholars on the stage my distinguished brothers and sisters in islam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh it's a great honor to be here at the istama of sunni daawat islami is a great privilege to be here and you've just been listening to hazrat allama maulana qari rizwan sahab qibla who has been warming your hearts with the love of sayyidna rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who has been teaching you things so that you can go back and teach others so that you can go back and change your life and this is the message of sunni daawat islami If you look around the world one of the most fundamental challenges that's facing the world is that of peace is that of contentment in the heart is that of spirituality all around the world there is a vacuum a gap in people's hearts in terms of peace in terms of contentment and this is something which people are looking for we say that we live in a civilized world we say that we are the most advanced nations in the world that the world has developed so much that the world has advanced so much in terms of its scientific research in terms of its technological development in terms of its creations when you look around yourself and you see high rise all these buildings all these developments and the transport tra transportation system we say that we live in a world which is the most advanced the advanced society than ever before in history and yet we see more people being killed more people being murdered more people being raped more wars that's happening more homes that's been uprooted more homes that's been destroyed more orphans who are made more children who are molested we see all this 
in the world that we call advanced, in the world we so called civilized. This is happening around us. Look around you. What is happening in Afghanistan? Look around you. What is happening in Palestine? Look around you. What is happening in Iraq? And all those countries where people are being murdered, people are being killed, and their reputation and their respect is being destroyed every day. You live in a country where you haven't faced these kind of situations. You may have not experienced torture. You may not have experienced all the things that other people are experiencing. But it's just imagine that we are supposed to be living in a civilized world. This is not civilization. This is not in any way the respectable society that it should be. This is not in any way the civilized society that it should be. Because one person's blood should be enough to wake us up. And there's thousands and thousands that are being killed every day. Thousands whose janazah happens every single day. And this is something we watch in our, in our television and we watch and we read about it in our newspapers. And we call this a civilized world. All this is happening because certain people want to control the world. They want to have power and gain superiority over others. Those people are ruthless people. People will do anything to ensure that their superiority continues above anybody's. Look at the situation of our countries and our societies. We see that people have become motivated by greed. Greed is something which is motivating them. Businesses have become greedy and those businesses are now controlling the governments and those governments, when they attack, when they cause war, it is those businesses that benefit. It is those businesses that make money. It is the war of businesses because of the greed that exists in our society. Because we see that people have become so greedy. We look around the world. We say that we're living in a recession. We say that we're living in a situation where the economic situation is so destable. The economic situation is so destabilized that thousands of people are losing their jobs. Thousands of people have become unemployed. Thousands of people who cannot feed their children, who are living in poverty. And this is because of the greed of the people, the greed of few people that exist in this world. If you look in America, 1% of the population controls 40% of the wealth. 1% of the population controls 40% of the world. And similarly, in other countries where few percentage of people control most of the world, most of the wealth, and this is their greed that's driving all these issues. But you know, while their greediness, the banking system which has been destroyed, the banking system which has failed. And it is the ordinary people who are having to pay for it through taxes to save those banks. It is ordinary people who are have to, having to save those banks. And those greedy people have got away scot-free. No one has charged them. No one has jailed them. Yet they have brought so much destruction in this world. This is the society we live in. And we call this civilized society. We call this society as the most advanced society. But let me tell you that even with all the wealth that those people have got, there's one thing they're missing, which is peace, which is peace in their hearts, which is spirituality. Those people are still searching for spirituality. Those people are still lacking for spirituality. Those people are still lacking, people are still lacking happiness in their lives. Look at all the rich people. They may have all the money. They may have all the power. There's one thing they don't have is peace because they don't have Islam in their hearts. Because they don't have the love of Rasulullah in their hearts. Let me tell you that if they had Islam in their hearts, 
heart, then there would be peaceful people. If they had Islam in their heart, then they wouldn't be causing so much destruction. If they had the love of Rasulullah then they would be following his footsteps and there wouldn't be so much destruction. There wouldn't be so much corruption. There wouldn't be so much killing. There wouldn't be so much destruction. So much killings of young people, of children, of uprooting homes. All those things wouldn't exist if they followed the footsteps of Rasulullah And this is why Islam says, the Holy Quran says, that a mu'min is he whose heart is pure. A mu'min is he whose heart is pure. Purity is so crucial. And this is what Sunni Daud Islami is trying to do, is to purify our hearts, to cleanse our hearts. The Holy Quran gives three distinctions of the heart. You have nafs amara which is number one. You have nafs lawama which is number two. And you have nafs mutmainna which is number three. nafs amara is a nafs that is always taking you towards evilness. That is always taking you towards badness. Which is always encouraging you to do bad things, to do evil things. And it is a nafs which is always saying to you, go and do this. You can cheat, nobody's looking. You can kill that person, nobody's looking. You can hit that person, nobody's looking. You can cheat, you can destroy, you can murder, you can kill, because nobody's looking. This is what nafs Ammara is trying to encourage you to do. But every time you listen to nafs Ammara and do a bad deed, every time you lie, every time you cheat, a black spot appears on your heart. The more you listen to nafs Ammara, the more that black stop spot increases. The more you listen, the black spot increases. The more you do evil things. Every time you don't pray, every time you listen to shaitan, every time you cheat or do evil things or bad things, the black heart increases and increases so much that he overtakes your heart. And you feel well, if Nafsi Ammara overtakes your heart, then there is no point of return. You cannot purify. You cannot go back. You have been overtaken by shaitan. You have been overtaken by evilness. And those people who are causing destruction in this world, those people who are murdering innocent people, who are killing innocent people, who are destroying innocent homes, who are destroying innocent countries, have been overtaken by evilness, have been overtaken by Nafsi Ammara. When there is another nafs, which is nafs al lawama Nafs al lawama is a nafs that says to you, don't do this. Don't do this because Allah is watching. Don't do this because you are a Muslim. Don't do this because you are someone who believes in truthfulness. You shouldn't be doing this. This is the nafs which is saying to you, don't do it for Allah's sake because Allah is watching. If nobody is watching, Allah is watching. And there is a daily fight between nafs amara and nafs lawama every day. Every day there is a struggle in all of us. Because all of us are human beings. nafs lawama is taking you through towards badness. And nafs lawama -law -law is saying don't do it. nafs amara is saying do the bad thing. But nafs lawama is saying don't do it. But every time he listen to nafs lawama, the black spot decreases. Every time he listen the black spot decreases and you keep listening to nafs al-lawama until the time comes when your whole heart becomes pure and this is the time when nafs mutmainna takes over and when nafs mutmainna takes over then let me tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who says to nafs mutmainna oh nafs mutmainna enter jannah there is no questions asked this is the the mission of Sunni Daud Islami all over the world, not just in Dubai, not just in India, but not just in England, but all over the world to help people to be their nafs to become Nasdem Mutmainna. But Nafsa Mutmainna to take over. This is what Sunni Daud Islami is doing to purify our heart, to cleanse our heart so that we can become good Muslims. We can become the real ambassadors of Rasulullah because we are. The representative of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu We are the ambassadors of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the mission of Sunni Dat Islami. 
and their work is something which is creating all over the world. And I look in England that those children who are going on the wrong path because of Sunni Dad Islam are coming on the right path. Subhanallah. Those children who are in drugs, those children who are in dr drinking, those children who are going on the wrong path and now on the right path. You know, you may say that you live in Dubai, which is a very modern country. But believe me, England is a bit further than that. London is a bit further than that. America is a bit further than this. At least you have some Islamic values. So, the need for organizations like Sunni Daud Islam is so crucial in those countries. To ensure that peace is something that people gain, but they gain it by cleansing their heart. You know, our body is made up of two things. Our body is made up of two things. Firstly, the human beings are made up of two things. Firstly, body, and secondly, soul. Human beings are made up of two things, body and soul. Body is something that we can see. We wear nice clothes to show our bodies in a more respectable way. Body is something that we sometimes people are proud of. People say, I'm so handsome, I'm so tall, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm so healthy, I'm so brave. There may be women who will say, I'm so beautiful. And it is the bodies that has been abused. If you look at the advertisements that exist to sell cars, if you look at the advertisements that exist to sell products, it is the naked bodies that are used. So people are proud of their bodies. They used to sell things. People have become arrogant. Some people have become arrogant about their bodies. That we are very handsome. We are very fair. The other person is very dark. The other person is very short. The other person is very thin. But look at me. I am so great because I am so fair. And I am so healthy. I am so tall. Bodies are something that we are proud of. But let me tell you, body are, bodies are nothing. Body is nothing. We work hard for our bodies. We go to our work. We wake up early. We want to get to work early. We don't want to miss the time when we have to be at work. We wake up early. We get dressed and we run to work. We don't want to be late. Because if we're late to work, then the boss will sack us. The boss, the boss will tell us to go. The boss will, we will lose our jobs. So we work hard. We work hard for our bodies so that we can have better food. We work hard for our bodies so we can have better clothing. We work hard for our bodies so we can have bigger houses. We work hard for our bodies so that we can have better life, a more developed life, a more sophisticated life. We work so hard. Imagine a child, a child who wants to become a doctor. Mashallah. Mashallah, the Amir of Sunni Daud Islami, His Eminence, Hazrat Al Lama Murana Shaki Nuri Sahib, is here on the stage. So I was saying that imagine a young person who wants to become a doctor. In order to become a doctor, if that young person has a life of 75 years, then that young person, in order to become a doctor, has to work hard for 25 years. That person cannot afford to enjoy himself, otherwise he will fail his exam. That young person cannot afford to waste his time Otherwise, he will not succeed in becoming a doctor. That young person has to be very disciplined. That young person has to work day and night in order to become a doctor, in order to achieve his mission, in order to achieve his goal. That young person 
cannot go about and hang about streets or the corners or the shopping centers. He has to go to the library. He has to take out the books. He has to read those books. He needs to prepare for the exam in order to become a doctor. And if he passes after 25 years of hard work, then he may have a 40 years of good life. If he has um, a 60, 65 years, or maybe he has 50 years of good life. If he has a 75 years of life. People normally live for 75 years, 80 years, 90 years. If you live, uh, and I pray that all of you, may Allah give you and grant you a happy and lengthy life. But we normally, Kullo nafsin zayqatul maut, we all have to die someday. And we normally live around 75 years, 85 years. But 25 years of hard work for 40 to 50 years of easy life. This is the investment we make. But we're doing all this for our body. We work so hard for our body. To please our body. And the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, we pray, oh Allah, give us a, a house. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a house, we pray, oh Allah, give us a bigger house. When Allah gives us a bigger house, we say, oh Allah, give us even a bigger house. Our greed never stops. But everything we do, we do for our body. But the body is not everything. Because if we take the soul away, then the body becomes irrelevant. If you take the soul away, then the body becomes irrelevant. It doesn't matter if it's the body of your beloved, the person who you love. If it's the body of your son, or if it's the body of your father, or your mother. It doesn't matter how precious that body is. It doesn't matter how respectable that body is. But if the soul comes out of that body, you will not keep that body in your home for more than one or two days. You'll take it to the graveyard and you bury it. All the vanity, all the arrogance is demolished because everyone has to go to the graveyard. You go to the graveyard and you see those people who were kings, those people who call themselves as the rich people, or those people who are proud of their wealth, those dictators who are proud of their powers. Look at them, go to the graveyard and see the, all the vanity has been vanished because they're all buried there. So the soul is everything. And the question I want to ask is that if the soul is everything, the body is only temporary. We only have a temporary life of 75 years. But the life that we have forevermore, the life which is everlasting, is in Jannah. If we work so hard for our bodies, tell me, what are we doing for the life which is forevermore? What are we doing for the life that is everlasting? What are we doing to cleanse our heart? To please the soul. Because we work so much for the body. My beloved father he's, and Mufakir Islam is here on stage and so is the Amir of Sunni Dat Islami. So I'm going to wrap up my speech so that you can listen to the great speakers here on stage right now. What I was saying is that the soul is everything because if the soul comes out of the body then the body becomes irrelevant. But if you look at the priorities in our lives we, sh we are putting so much emphasis, so much priority on our bodies rather than the soul. You know, if the body is ill, we go to the doctor. We say to the doctor, Doctor, our body, I'm not feeling well. Give me some medicine. Give me some antibiotic. I'm not feeling well. We go very quickly 
because we're very concerned, because we're very worried that we are ill. We go to the doctor immediately. But when our soul is ill, tell me how many people come to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many people go to the masjid and pray? How many people ask for forgiveness? And how many people come to the Prophet sallam, and ask for, forgive, for, for forgiveness from here? Because the Holy Quran says, that if you have done zulm on your souls, then ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then ask forgiveness from Rasulullah. And if He forgives you, then you'll find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most compassionate, most merciful. And if you want to find peace, then the Holy Quran says, Allah be zikri lahi tatmin no qulub. That peace and tranquility, peace and solace, if you're looking for spirituality, then it is in the prayer, it is in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if we look at our lives, how many people pray? How many people, this is something which Hazrat Allama Walana Qair is once up, Qibla was asking, how many people are going to pray full time? This is the question that we need to ask. Prayer is something which give us, gives us everlasting life. How many people actually pray? Our Prophet Sallallahu said, this is the hadith, that prayer is the foundation of deen. as salat e deen فَمَنْ أَقَامَهَا أَقَامَ الدِّينَ وَمَنْ تَرْكَهَا حَدْمَ الدِّينَ if you have established prayer, then you have established the foundation of your deen. And if you have left the prayer, then you have demolished the foundation of your deen. This is the sense of the worship. In the Holy Quran, it also says, In the Salat Tanha and Il Fahishai wal Munkar, that it is prayer that stops you from evilness, it is prayer that stops you from selfishness. It is prayer that stops you from greediness. It is prayer and the worship of Allah that stops you from being destructive in the world, from causing destruction, from causing violence, from destroying our society, from destroying our communities. It is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many people are doing that? How many people are making prayer as a priority? And this is the mission of Sunni Daat Islami, is to purify our hearts, is to cleanse our hearts, so that we can have an everlasting life, a life which is forevermore in Jannah, where we belong. This is the mission of Sunni Daat Islami, to cleanse our heart and to purify our heart. And this is the mission that you need to take away from this system. You need to take it to your homes. You need to take it to your communities. You need to take it to your countries so that we can have a peaceful country. We can have a peaceful home. We can have a peaceful community. And if we were to do this, then we can have peace in the world. We can have peace in the world which is lacking at the moment. The world is thirsty for spirituality. The world is calling for peace. The world is thirsty for peace. And that peace can only come from the religion of Islam. That peace can only come from the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. That peace can only come from by following the life of Sayyidina Rasulullah Wasallam. This century, the last century, was the century of destruction. And that destruction continues. Let's commit ourselves to make this century the century of peace. And that peace will come through Islam and Islam only. Because we will show people by living our life as a role model. By living our life in the following the footsteps of Prophet ﷺ. By living our life in a good way. By following the commands of Allah. By following the commands of Rasulullah ﷺ. If we were to do that, then we can create peace. We can have peace. And other people who are non-Muslims will come and accept Islam. Other people who are non-Muslim, all those people who are calling us barbaric, all those people who are saying, who are abusing our religion, all those people who are torturing us, all those people who are saying that we are backward people, that Islam has no place in, in, in the world. Islam has no place in modern society. All those people will look at our lives 
and they will accept Islam. The whole world can become Muslim if we were to become true Muslim. This is the mission of Sunni Dawat Islami. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.